friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today for an ink blended project using a stencil from Simon Says Stamp called the XL Rose Bouquet. This stencil is large in design and will accommodate a slimline or in my case, a five by seven card. So I've got a blank white panel here and I'm just gonna move it in place and I'm intentionally leaving some white space from the stencil on there because I don't wanna make it look like a full background. So I'm just going to adhere it in place with some post-it tape for some temporary adhesion while I ink blend. I finally got my hands on some ink stands here, so I'm excited to be using them in this video. There are lots of options as far as tools go for ink blending. For today's project, I'm using the Rainbow Pack Blender Brushes and Storage Container. This tube of multicolored brushes come in a tube. So it'll hold everything together and they stack together nicely. And I love the small footprint. And because these brushes are so little, they fit nicely at the end of my finger for lots of control. So with this first layer of ink, I'm gonna try to, as much as possible, add an even layer throughout. Now there's not a lot of blending that you can do to create evenness since you're pouncing down the color when you first apply it. I am gonna start first with the center of the flowers because that's where the darkest pigment is gonna be on colored flowers anyway. So I'm starting at the center of the flowers and blending out and trying not to overlap where the foliage is. So I'll go ahead and do that and once I'm done with that lighter color, I'll start with that second pigment of color which is a little bit darker and we'll add some shading and interest to these roses. I'm gonna go ahead and concentrate on adding this darker shade to the right and left of each petal. So each of those little shapes, I'm just gonna apply some ink at the corners and maybe at the little, uh, at the bottom of them if I can without overlapping completely and hiding that first lighter pink color that I applied originally. As you can see, this is gonna create lots of dimension and depth to these stenciled flowers. And really that's what you're aiming for when you have a single layered stenciled card you want to give it as much dimension as you can and this is my way of creating that depth and dimension so once i'm done with the flowers i'm going to move on to the foliage i've got two shades of green here again i'm starting out with the lighter color i'm going to apply an even amount of color throughout and you'll notice that some of it is discolored by the pink ink that was there but that's okay with me because in a natural setting light will bounce off colors of flowers and bounce that color off onto the foliage nearby. So I'm completely okay with this. And sometimes if I'm really picky, I'll go ahead and clean off my stencil and apply a mask with adhesive or post-it tape or something like that. But for this particular project, I didn't mind so much because there are only pinks and greens to use. After applying that even layer of light green, I'm gonna go in with my darker green using a different dauber and I'm gonna apply ink towards the bottom of each of the leaves. The way I visualize shading is I look at the flowers individually and any cluster of leaves around it, I picture the leaves fanning out from that single bud of flower. So I'm applying the darker color on the side of the leaf that is closer to the flowers. I hope that makes sense. All right, so there are also little berries that I ink blended using a purple ink, and here is our reveal. So this is a single layer design, but it doesn't need to look flat. As you can see, if you create dimension using different shades of color for a stenciled project, you can create lots of shading, depth, and dimension. Now to create more interest, I'm gonna go ahead and splatter it with some gold and white ink. I'm just gonna add some water to my paint and then pick it up with my paintbrush and then flick it by tapping the brush onto my finger to create the splatters. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and while I'm doing so, I'm gonna die cut this Hello die from Simon Says Stamp to start my sentiment. I've die cut that halo or background with some vellum. I'm gonna die cut the hello word using gold glitter cardstock for that top layer. And to give it more dimension, I'm gonna die cut this hello word twice more in order to adhere them together to give it more height. I'm gonna use a craft mat here to help me apply my dot tape runner to the letters from the word hello. Those little tiny dots from the adhesive are gonna to stick to the words and to the cardstock only. So we can go ahead and adhere and, it's, and stack them together without a big mess. 
I'm not very consistent with what kind of adhesive I use. Sometimes I use liquid, sometimes I go for a tape runner. Okay, so once I have everything stacked together, I'm just going to adhere that to the vellum piece. I thought I would take the chance and apply the dot adhesive on the back of the vellum, hoping it wouldn't show, but it did show a little bit. So I go ahead and rub it off a little bit where there is vellum between the letters, and that worked out okay. So I'll go ahead and apply that to the bottom third of my card using a T-ruler to make sure that I line it up perfectly. And then to give it a sub-sentiment, I'm going to be using the Thinking of You Sentiments. Once I chose the sentiment I wanted to use, I went ahead and trimmed it down off camera. And what I'm doing now is just hiding that white core from the cardstock using a black Copic marker. And then I can add some black foam adhesive strips to the back and then apply it to my card. I just wanted to say that it makes me very excited to be able to find black foam on the market because I love that I don't have to see a white strip of foam underneath a black sentiment. I don't know about you, but it's the little things that excite me about the crafting tools that we find. Okay, so I'm applying a few iridescent sequins to my card, and then I'll flip it over and apply some foam adhesive to give my card panel, again, more dimension because we had that one layer stencil design. So we're trying to give it lots of dimension wherever we can. And that will finish my card for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new using the tips that I provided. And if anything, I hope it inspires you to create with the stencils that you have. Thanks so much for joining me today and have a great day. Bye everyone.